Someone type go in the group chat when we should start. It's live now. I don't see it. Yeah, it says on it says on the screen it's live now. Yeah, yeah. I but imagine there will be a delay, maybe. Probably, maybe take. No, it's not seconds. like so. When I go to, when I go to the ESDLC, the the um, the big red E one, right? That's the one where our standard services are, right? Listen. Listen. Hey, John, can you start talking? Listen. I think it's live. All right. Um, let's start with this then. Good morning, OC, and please excuse us as we go through our, some of our technical difficulties. But anyhow, welcome to the Sunday morning prayer. This is the official start of service. Uh, and, uh, let's uh, jump right in. This morning's passage comes from Proverbs chapter 30, verses 7 through 9. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me now. Neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. So, as we wrap up the first week of quarantine, uh, we may have seen this behavior in either uh, ourselves or our family or you know, our community at large. And uh, this is a, a good time to kind of. Uh, Keep things in perspective of, of uh, how, how things go. So the first item we have this morning is take some time to thank God that even in this crisis we continue to receive our daily bread. So as we enter week two of quarantine, let us take some time to reflect on the past week. We may have not received everything we wanted or looked for, but for essentials at least, uh, let's take some time to give God thanks.
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us to another day in our lives. Um, it has been uh, a difficult time for, for many of us. Lord. We've not been able to uh, obtain a lot of the supplies that we previously had access to. But Father, I pray that uh, for the day that you continue to sustain us and that we are able to rely on your grace and your provision. And though we don't know what will come tomorrow, that we, uh, that we know that at least you will be there tomorrow, Father, and that you will give us our daily bread again when that, when that day comes. Thank you. All right, item number two. Uh, let us pray that our hearts are not dependent on the security and the money that uh, materials may promise. Um, when we find ourselves in want of material goods and excess, it's typically because we feel that it will provide us with something we want or need. Like, you know, this food will feed us or this toilet paper will give me control over my life. Uh, let's take some time to examine ourselves and see what we're looking for and bring it before the Lord, our provider.
are there a number of us have lost access to income or uh, even groceries or supplies. Uh, I, I pray that we continue to look for you to be our provider and our life giver. And though we may not necessarily be praying for manna from heaven to appear on the ground, I, I pray that we nonetheless uh, do not panic and, and try to fill our lives with things to try to make ourselves uh, more comfortable in your absence, Lord. Uh, just that like, these are not bad things, Father, but they are not substitutes for you. Uh, pray that we can continue to put our reliance on you and that we are not uh, panicked by a situation uh, going out of our control. All right. So the third item we have this morning is pray that we continue to remember and honor our Lord as we tend to the needs of ourselves and our loved ones. So when we enter survival mode, we are more likely to prioritize our own well-being and focus on ourselves. It may be easy to justify things we do or don't do out of protection, but let's not lose sight of who our God is and who he calls us to be.
Father, I pray that we never forget about you uh, as we go through our day. That uh, even as pressing matters uh, may visit us and and we need to uh, take desperate action, I, I pray that we always remember that you have called us to be a salt and light of this world. And, and that I pray that the the work you have done on our hearts does not become hidden by by our behaviors, Lord, and that we don't uh, disgrace you with with, with our own uh, impulsive actions. Uh, as we go on through the week, Father, I pray that uh, we continue to give you glory and honor through our words and actions. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, that concludes uh, prayer for this morning. Uh, in about four minutes, we will resume service with uh, some time of worship and song. Thank you. All right, for those on the live stream, a um, little housekeeping really quick. You may want to turn on your volume just a little bit. Not sure how this is going to sound over 
on the live stream, but um, just don't want to blow up any eardrums this morning. Uh, start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for just allowing this time, Lord, um, even though we're meeting socially distant, Lord, but um, we're still we're still meeting uh, in your house. Um, Lord, as we go through this, this pandemic, Lord, I pray that uh, you just let your presence be felt amongst each and every one of us. And Lord, uh, yeah, just let your presence be felt and uh, watch over those that are in need, and especially uh, the elderly. And, uh, the, yeah, Lord, uh, just be with each and every one of us as we go about our lives in this modified versions of our, of our lives right now, Lord. Uh, and keep us safe. Um, we just did today's service up into your hands. For all this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Here I am to bow down. 
Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. The dweller of my heart 
precious death of freedom's in your blood. It's in your blood, Jesus, oh Holy One, I sing to you, forgiven, Savior. I'm overcome with your great love to me. Son of God, strength be unconfessed. You alone, the darkness cannot bear. Lord of love. Kindness draws me near, it draws me near, Son of God, prophecy of old, you alone, Redeemer of my soul, come again and lead your people home. Lead us home, Jesus, O oh, Holy One, I sing to you, forgiven, Savior, I'm overcome with your great love for me. You are worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy of all my praise. You are beautiful, oh so beautiful. I will lift up my hands and sing. You are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy of all my praise. You are beautiful, oh so beautiful. And I will lift up my hands and sing. Jesus, oh Holy One, sing to you. Forgiven, Savior, I'm overcome with your great love for me. Jesus, oh Holy One, I sing to you, forgiven. Savior, I'm overcome with your great love for me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, that you are good in all situations and we're glad that we can gather this morning even though we're online and we're not in in person in the flesh we thank you for who you are everything that you have done may you bless not only our service this morning but also all the churches that are gathering online uh, streaming live may you bless your church may we worship and glorify you May you edify uh, the body of Christ all around the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good morning, uh, brothers and sisters. Welcome to EFC Orange County. Uh, this is new. We, we haven't done this uh, completely online before. But thank you to Andrea and Winston for setting this up. Praise God for this technology, um, but let's pray that we won't need it for too long. 
And uh, just, just like we usually do uh, after the praise and worship, we usually shake hands. But if you will, uh, just go in the chat and say hi to everyone. Take a moment to say hi. A few of you are doing that. Awesome, awesome. So I trust that you guys can all see me and hear me good. Um, again, this is our first time holding a worship service completely online. Uh, my first time preaching from home. So uh, this is very new and I hope we can just get used to it for however long we need to do it. But uh, no real announcements this morning, um, other than the fact that we're all at, on this stay at home order uh, based on the governor's uh, announcement this past week. And so I think all of us are abiding by that. We're all logged in online. Um, and, uh, you know, let's trust God through this situation. Um, so we'll just get right into the message this morning. Um, when I took a break from preaching after our boys were born, my plan was to resume our series in Philippians when I returned to the pulpit. And I, but I didn't expect, you know, like everyone else, uh, that we would be in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. And the situation has evolved rapidly just in the last 10 days, if you think about back. And at this point, um, you know, every one of us has been affected by this crisis in some way. And I was thinking about it during, during a crisis, uh, fear and panic goes, goes up. It's just natural. Everyone gets scared and everyone starts thinking of the worst case scenarios. But you know what else goes up? Prayer. Because people are desperate for some relief. And in times of crisis, people actually realize how little control we have. And there's this sudden demand for real hope and security. So I'm sure that all around the world, people of all backgrounds and beliefs are beginning to pray. And as Christians, we're, we're called to pray. Prayer is this essential you know, part of the life of the believer and the life of the church. We pray when we come together, whether it's in person or it's online like this morning. We pray when we're apart, when we're alone. And we pray as situations come up in life, like this global pandemic that we're in right now. Prayer is meant to be a basic part of our everyday life. But given the circumstances right now, prayer is especially vital. So... Instead of continuing our study in Philippians, we're going to pause that. And for the time being, while we're in this uh, season, we're going to be walking through the Lord's Prayer step by step. And um, many of us are familiar with the Lord's Prayer, uh, these words. We recite them from time to time, but they can easily roll off of our tongue without much thought. Um, and I hope our time in this familiar passage will not just lead to more prayer, but more meaningful prayer for every one of us, especially in this crisis that we're in right now. So before we go on, let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Um, join me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for just your, your consistency, your unchanging nature and your faithfulness, uh, even as the world has has been changing. Um, things around us have been very unstable and uncertain. And even now we, we can't see um, how this whole coronavirus situation will play out. But we know you are true. We know you are good. We know you are sovereign and we submit ourselves to you. We give our full attention to you this morning as uh, we open up your word um, and we look at the Lord's prayer. Uh, would you Teach us, reveal yourself to us, uh, encourage us as we um, 
uh, learn and we um, seek you when you show us uh, how to pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So we'll be in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, and the context of this uh, passage is, is the Sermon on the Mount, which I think a lot of us are familiar with as well. Throughout his, this sermon, Jesus is shining a light on the religious teaching and the practices at the time. Uh, and a lot of the religious leaders, they had twisted God's commands and they have fallen short of the true meaning of the law. So when Jesus came to the issue of prayer, he, he called out the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he even referred to them as hypocrites. Because they constantly were praying in public to impress others. And then he also called out the pagans, which were those who believed in false gods. Because they would repeat the same phrases over and over, thinking that their chanting will get the attention of their gods. And instead of these two types of prayers, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And he he actually didn't call it the Lord's Prayer. That's something that came in later, you know, the church traditions. Because it wasn't even a prayer that he himself, you know, prayed. It was a model that he gave his disciples to help them how to pray. So today we're going to begin with just four words. It's just the address of the prayer. And in the following weeks, we'll get to each part. So today's passage is... The I think the shortest passage I've ever preached on, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, actually part A, the first half. It goes like this. Our Father in heaven. That's it. So we're going to break this down and hopefully glean some, some valuable truth from even these four words. The first two words, our Father, has a lot of meaning here. In the Old Testament, uh, there are times when God uh, is referred to as Father. But it was always describing the relationship between God and Israel as his son. And in some very rare cases, it would be referring to God's relationship to the king of Israel. So it was pretty unheard of for Jews to address God as Father. The title was too close and too personal for the Jews to pray. Uh, but in his Sermon on the Mount and throughout the Gospels, Jesus repeatedly uses Father to refer to God. And he was introducing something new and radical by referring to God as Father. But he wanted his disciples, all of his followers, to understand that this was the most basic way to address God in prayer. So I wanted to ask us, like, how do we address God when we pray? When you pray, what do you refer to God as? Sometimes we simply address him as God. That's how I learned to pray when I was young. As a kid, I would start off with dear God. Or we might address him as Lord. And that might suggest or convey the, the role of servants and disciples who follow our master. It's also common to hear prayers begin with Jesus. We pray directly to him. These are all good and appropriate ways to address God. And we definitely aren't limited uh, to one way. God is our creator. He's our Lord, our king, our savior, our friend. But here Jesus teaches us that the most basic relationship we have with God is that he is our father and we are his children. The primary way that we relate to God is not as disciples to teacher or servants to Lord or even creatures to creator. It's children to father. Now, Personally, in my own life, I'm still getting used to the reality of being a father. Uh, and I think Christine is as well. Yesterday, she asked me, like, can you believe we have these two kids, these two human beings now to take care of? 
and it still seems like surreal to us. Our boys, uh, Carter and Cody, they're like completely dependent on us for everything, right? They can't dress themselves. They can't feed themselves. They can't change their own diapers. They can't speak, but they can definitely cry. That's one thing that we don't have to help them with. Carter and Cody, I realize it's very obvious, but I realize they can't do anything for us as the parents. But the amazing thing is that our relationship with our sons is not based on what they can do for us. It's based on the commitment that Christine and I have made to them as their parents. And this is true of our relationship with God as well. It's not based on what we can do for God. We don't, we don't earn or we don't work for the right to become a child of God. We're given this precious status by sheer grace. You see, our identity as sons and daughters of God is tied to who Jesus is as the eternal son of God and what he accomplished for us at the cross. As sinners, we essentially cut ourselves off from God. We are all spiritual orphans. But because the son of God came in the flesh and he paid the price for our redemption, taking the punishment for our sins, through faith in him, we're welcomed into a personal relationship with God. He becomes our father who has adopted us into his family. And in him, we are welcomed. He's our father. He adopts us. And this is all possible because of Jesus. In the Gospel of John, the Apostle John says, To all who did receive him, that is Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Because of who Jesus is and what he did for us, we have the right to call God our Father. Now, we usually conclude our prayers by stamping them in Jesus' name, acknowledging him as the one who gives us the right to ask things of God. But even at the beginning of our prayers, the fact that we can address God as our Father is all because of Jesus. See, at the cross, he was rejected so that we could be adopted. Again, the Apostle John says in, in his letter, 1 John chapter 3, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. It's a beautiful thing. Now, coming back to the, the, the four words in our passage this morning, it says, our Father in heaven, he is our Father in heaven. Those second words, in heaven, we might gloss over this as some obvious fact. Obviously, he's in heaven. But when we pray, Heavenly Father, we're not just acknowledging the reality of where God dwells. We're recognizing his supreme place over all earthly matters. But we tend to think of heaven as this place that we go after we die. Or it's the place where God and the angels dwell, where everything's peaceful, perfect, and good. And while these are true, the effect of this thinking is that we can easily see heaven as some distant place or reality. As Christians, we'll end up there in the future someday, but heaven seems to have little significance or meaning for us today. But I want to tell you this morning that to acknowledge that God is our Father in heaven and to know that God is in heaven does not mean he's distant or removed from what's going on down here on earth. It's about the reality that God is greater than everything that's happening right now on earth, and he is sovereign over it. As our Heavenly Father, he is always in a position of complete authority over creation. Nothing happens on earth that heaven, really our Heavenly Father, does not see or allow. Now, I know this, this idea may not always comfort us because 
we naturally wonder why God even allows things to happen that seem so terribly tragic and, and unnecessary, such as this coronavirus you know, crisis. But in truth, remembering that our Father is in heaven means we have confidence to face the difficult realities here on earth because we can rest assured that nothing happens beyond his supervision or control. If our Father in heaven has allowed things to take place on earth, he also has the authority to stop, change, or alter things as well. Ultimately, we are trusting in his goodness. Now, at times, we will feel helpless in our circumstances. We will feel vulnerable down here. But we have a perfect Father in heaven who loves us deeply, and we can trust that he is always doing what is good. Just two weeks ago, if you think back, life was pretty normal. All of you students were still going to school. Sports games on TV were still being played. There was no mention of social distancing or flattening the curve. You could travel if you wanted to. You could go to stores and markets and find toilet paper without any anxiety or doubt. But in this short time, we've seen so much change. The number of coronavirus infections has risen dramatically along with the deaths. We, we were allowed to gather in groups of 250 even a week ago, and then 100, then 50, and then 10, and now not at all. Multiple states around the country have issued stay-at-home orders for all residents so that almost one in four Americans are pretty much on lockdown. You know, for Christine and I personally, we've kind of been on, in our own lockdown once we brought the boys home with us. And as we've been watching the situation develop over on the news, it's clear there's a lot of fear and panic in the world right now. So many aspects of life have been shaking up. There's no clear end in sight to this situation. People are looking for comfort and reassurance from political leaders, doctors and health officials, or even financial experts. But as Christians who have been adopted by the grace of God, we have the privilege of looking to our Heavenly Father and finding ultimate comfort and security in Him. Because we know that our Father loves us deeply and will do what is good. Our hearts can find peace and rest, even in the midst of this crisis. So church, let's not give in to the fear or the panic. Let's look to our heaven, Heavenly Father and let's pray. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, again, we acknowledge that we are so small, we are so weak and vulnerable down here on earth, but you are above all that is going on in this world. You are sovereign always. There is not a single thing, not a single event that occurs on this earth in our lives that is out of your control, that is beyond your sight. And we just recognize that even though we are so frail and life is so fragile, we know that you, our God, are always in full control. We know that you love us deeply. We know that you are always good. So we trust in you. We put our faith in you. We look to you for hope. We look to you for our comfort. May you bring peace in the midst of this crisis. May we remember that you are not a distant God. You are in heaven, but you are not far from us. You are powerful. You are mighty. You are sovereign. You are our Father. As your children, we look to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
refuge for the poor, a shelter from the storm. This is our God. He'll wipe away your tears until you waste their kiss. This is our God. So call upon his name. He is mighty to save. This is our God. Father to the orphan, a healer to the broken, this is our God. Brings peace to our madness and comfort in our sadness, this is our God. So call upon his name. He is mighty to save, this is our God. This is the one we have waited for. This is the one we have waited for. This is the one we have waited for. So call upon his name. He is mighty to save. This is our God. A fountain for the thirsty, a father for the lonely. This is our God. Brings glory to the humble, crowns for the faithful. This is our God. So call upon his name. He is mighty to save. This is our God. Call upon his name, he is mighty to save, this is our God. This is the one we have waited for. This is the one we have waited for. This is the one we have waited for. So call upon his name. He is mighty to save. This is our God. So call upon his name. He is mighty to save. This is our God. Refuge for the poor, a shelter from the storm. This is our God. You wipe away your tears until you waste their years. This is our God. So call upon his name. He is mighty to save. This is our God. Upon his name, he is mighty to save. This is our God. Yes, God, you are mighty safe. You are the refuge for us. And we look to you as our Father in heaven above. We know that you are working even in the midst of this crisis. We know that no power, no disease, no evil on earth can triumph because you are our God. 
We trust in your unfailing love and your goodness. We know that you will prevail. And as your church, may you instill in us the faith and the peace and the confidence to continue praising you, rejoicing in you, and living for you, no matter what the circumstances may be. May you have your way with us. May you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, that concludes our service. Um, thank you all for joining us online. And we look forward to worshiping together next Sunday. Hopefully this won't be for too long. But um, yeah, we will try to improve on you know, any technical difficulties. Um, and have a great week. Um, stay, be safe. Continue to pray. Um, not just for yourself, for the church, but pray for the world. And uh, let's see God uh, work through this situation. Yeah. God bless you all.